This is the unboxing and review of the Real Grade RX-78 II Gundam. We have here the Real Grade RX-78 II Gundam. This is the Granddaddy Gundam. This is the first model in the Real Grade line which is kind of typical. A lot of uh, mo new model lines start off with the original Gundam from the original anime. This is a real grade in that what they did is they tried to imagine if these mobile suits existed in reality and designed them that way, as opposed to the anime, which is more designed to allow it to interact or with, with the other mobile suits and um, be easier on the animators and stuff like that. Have a lot, have a lot of detail, but not so much that the you know the frame shots will look strange. So we have here the image of the uh, granddaddy all done with markings and panel lining done. I believe this is this isn't a photograph. This is looks like artwork, or it might be the prototype. And like I said, this is the very first one of. The series here on the side, we've got some just showing some of the pieces. Now, one thing about the real grades is what they did is they did a um, actual inner frame. So this is what the inner frame looks like. So it's explaining that in, in and for, this is an early one. So this is all in Japanese. There is no English translation. So. This is just showing some of the how the pieces go together, like the uh, the the pilot module and stuff like that. So let's take a look inside. We've got the manual, and this is typical of a real grade manual, where it's very it, no, it gives a lot of information as well. Unfortunately, once again, all the descriptions are in Japanese, but it does show here the inner frame and how it gets incorporated together and these things are molded on the runners and the thing about the inner frame is there is articulation built into the inner frame itself which is molded together with different types of plastic normally ABS and polystyrene because one will melt at a different rate and won't interfere with the other one when it gets solid so they can do the actual articulation joints on the runner itself when it's molded. So this shows all the all the runners. Most of them are polystyrene, so you can use basically any paint or panel liner for it. The exception being the inner frame, which is ABS and polypropylene. Okay, not polystyrene. And then there are some piece other pieces that are ABS, but it looks like it's only two runners you need to be careful of. So just keep that in mind if you're going to do painting or panel lining. And then it just goes through like any other one where by section it's going to lead you through the build process part of the build process will be incorporating the inner frame and it looks like it's starting with the legs first and then going through the other parts um yes yeah, so we got the legs and then the waist so it looks like it's building from the bottom up as opposed to some suits that'll the instructions will start either at the head or the chest and then around it. And there's going to be some additional color images and stuff like that with the real grade manual and such. Now most real grades do come with stickers or all of them actually come with stickers. They're called realistic stickers so they're a little bit more detailed than what you would get for like a master grade or something like that. So, um, but, th but they also have the, the edges. So I think they're a little bit thinner. So the edges may not look, um, as, uh, be apparent as with a, uh, with the regular stickers that they do on kits. But if you can, it might be better to get the water slide decals for it instead, because then you know they're not going to show. Especially since this is supposed to be a really high quality, uh, model when it's done. So here are the runners and 
the colors are going to be the standard colors for a Granddaddy Gundam, where you've got the white, blue, red, and yellow. Looks like there's some light gray as well, and some black for the inner frame and stuff like that. So you've got your A runner, which has a mix of colors, which is typical. The yellows, the oh, the, uh, and the gray. We have some clear parts, and then the beam effects. This here is the um, the inner frame, and as you can see, if you can see right here. You, you know, I'm not manipulating it too much because it's still attached, but it does have the articulation worked into it. I, I'm thinking this is the foot here. And there's going to be more detail. There's going to be more piece, uh, color separation through pieces as opposed to color correcting decals and stuff like that. Here is the C frame, I mean uh, runner, which has your red and blue and some almost bluish gray colors. So once again, more color correction through the pieces. Here's our white and some more white. So we've got a D1, a D2. And then we have an E1 and an E2, which is a little bit darker of a white. It's more like the light gray. And then we got an F, which is probably inner, inner parts that other pieces are formed around, not necessarily part of the inner frame, but things that attach to the inner frame. And then it looks like on this one, the G is the weapon, because, you know, this looks like it's the end of the uh, bazooka. And then this here is more inner frame attachment type stuff. So this is the other ABS one, the H frame, I mean the H runner. And here, what I was talking about, the realistic uh, decals, some of them are going to be a little bit of color correction for the for the shinier parts, the me you know, metallic parts, and the eyes. And then if you can tell, these here are a little bit um, not as bright. They're a little bit muted, uh, more of a matte finish than a glossy finish on these stickers, whereas with the other stickers, they tend to be a little bit more glossy, so this is going to look more realistic when they're applied. But what I did is since uh, Bant Guy did release water slide decals for this kit, I did get the water slide decals instead. And I'll be applying these instead of these, except, you know, the only exception being is these metallic parts here. I might be using the, the stickers from here because they're normally recessed or behind plastic, stuff like that, so the edges aren't as visible. Or I might wind up just painting them because uh, I have some new metallic markers that I want to try out. So that's it for the uh, the kit and its runners. So I will see you for the next one. This is before the water slide decals have been applied. There has been panel lining and color correcting painting. Here is with the water decals applied, and a matte top coat. We have here the real grade RX-78-2 Gundam, and this is from the original anime. And this is a real grade in that it's a much more detailed, a lot more color separation, this is the uh, same scale as an, a high grade, but, you know, there's a whole bunch more panel lining on these. And as you can see, instead of just being like, you know, in a high grade, this entire knee part would probably have been just one color plastic using some color correcting stickers to adjust the colors as needed or it would have just been maybe two different colors, maybe the white and the darker gray. But in this case, it's got three colors. We've got the white, the, what I guess I would call a true gray, and then a light gray. And this type of thing where they have one color and a slightly lighter color is common throughout the kit. In fact, you know, so like here in the chest, we have the blue, then we have the light blue. 
That also happens here on the sides. It's even, and it even happens in the red where you have the red and then a lighter red. And that happens on the side as well. And on the back, a lot, definitely a lot of color separation. Now, that means that there's a lot of teeny, teeny, tiny pieces. Um, so, you know, if, if you have large hands, just, you know, cleaning them up can be a little bit troublesome. But it's definitely worth it in that it looks so good. This is the first... Whoop! That fell off. But it it this is the first real grade I've ever built. And it is an absolutely great kit as far as the look is concerned. I think it, it you know, besides the fact that with the HG kit, even the revived, it follows the anime um, aesthetics in that it has no markings on it whatsoever. So just the fact that it has so many markings, you know, decals or whatever you want to call them, on it to just bring things alive. Now, I did not use the realistic um, stickers that came with it because I prefer water slides. So I wound up getting the Bandai water slides, which are pretty much exactly the same. I did notice that the red in the water slide is slightly darker than this. This is more of a pink, whereas the other one is a red. But right here, you can see I actually touched this before it dried, so I'm going to have to clip that part off or glue it down. But the bottom part here is the water slide decal, and it's a little bit redder. But I used, because I touched it and it came apart, I wound up using the realistic sticker for the top. And it actually doesn't look that bad. If, if you take, don't, don't ignore the fact that this is sticking up because I just need to fix that. But it does actually match the color fairly well, and this being realistic, I actually put some softener on this to see if it would do a better job with, you know, blending out the the um, the edges of the sticker itself, which is why I tend to go with water slides because they basically kind of meld right in, and you don't see the side, you know, the edges. But this actually looks pretty good. These are quite a bit thinner than your standard stickers. They really did a good job with these realistic stickers. So if you can't find the water slides or you prefer not to work with water slides, I think the realistic stickers that come with the kit are going to be fine. Just put some, you know, uh, softener, decal softener on there. I use the Mr. Hobbies, which is called Mr. Mark, and that works really well. And it at least, it won't be as apparent, the, the, uh, the edges. But... So like I said, this looks really, really nice. <laughs> and I'm emphasizing the fact that it looks really, really nice because this was one of the most painful kits I've ever had to put together. Um, and it wasn't the small pieces that were troublesome because I was able to get them into where they needed to go without any issues. What it really is, is that the pieces are so loose. Now, the joints are okay. Now, I did put a top coat on this, and I did do all the panel lining and, and also have the, color, you know, the, um, I painted color correcting instead of using some of the stickers, and then I did the water slides. But even without the top coat on there, the elbow and knee joints were nice and stiff, and they do, they do do nice, you know, effects. Um, we'll get to those later. But... The, especially these skirts, they are just kind of on there. Now, see, yeah, it comes off. Now, now that I've put the top coat, it makes it a little bit thicker. But when you push these in, you do not hear a click, which means they're just basically sitting there. And I, of course, made the mistake of putting these on when I did the waist, and they kept on falling off. Not only did these fall off from the waist, but these little pieces here and the piece around here were constantly coming apart. Um, the, the yellow stayed on, no problem. The same thing happened to me with this piece up here on the shoulder, on the outside of the upper shoulder here. That kept on coming off. Um, the, the things that are holding this in, there's a little inner 
um, frame type thing that kept coming apart as I was not even trying to put these things together. I was just holding it and it came apart in my hand. So I had to glue the side skirts too. I had to glue this white piece on bit on on both sides. And, you know, the things where you would think that you would have to glue on, like the thrusters back here, didn't have to glue those on. They stand on no problem. But I had to glue more things on this. Oh, the, the little leg and arm accents kept coming off, so I had to glue those as well. I've glued more things on this model than I've had with any other model, including when I did the gun tank which is, I think, the sixth model to ever come out in the high-grade line. And that I had to glue quite a few things on, including the treads, where they kept on snapping out of where they fit together. I wouldn't have expected that with something called real-grade, which is supposed to be a higher quality than the high-grades. Now, I'm going to cut Bandai a little bit of slack, because one... This is the first time they attempted what they did with the real grades. And with the real grades, they were attempting to have a more realistic looking suit. The idea being, if these were actually made in real life, what would they look like? Not what's easy to draw, what's easy to do a model kit out. Their, their primary goal was, what would these look like in real life? And the other one was that there is a true inner full inner frame on this uh kit so there's a full full inner frame with with integrated all the all the movement is part of the inner frame and the entire leg piece including this bend here the mechanism that does the bend is all on one piece of inner frame so they had they molded it right on the runner with the articulation already as part of it and then the armor just snaps on like you would expect, you know, a, a robot, a, a mobile suit to be. So they were trying a whole bunch of other things. You know, th this is the very first model they did in the real grade. You know, like many other ones, they, they started with the original Gundam. And so the very this is the very first inner frame at this scale, at least, that they tried to work with. So this was the um the you know the the joint system um version 1 and I think now there's something like 37 kits and I think they're up to the 17th version of the inner frame and it most kits now aren't even full inner frames they're just part inner frame so and and they're much much better so I've got to cut them a little bit of slack cuz it was the first time that they were trying to do this they were learning they definitely adapted very quickly because even the uh, the next kit that came out, which is the, I believe it was Char Zaku 2, had a new inner frame, which was slightly better from what I hear from people. I haven't built it yet, but I will be building a standard Zaku for my next build. So I'll know more about what these are like. So it was it was just not once oh and i also had to glue all these pieces together on here on the shoulder because if you notice here it just is that that is how it sets it just sets right there it just goes between there there's basically nothing clipping this on except for the fact that the arm is staying on so it was a bit frustrating and you know there's a few times i just had to walk away from the build and uh just kind of take a moment and then, you know, go and, you know, come back later. Because it was just, every time I touched the model, pieces were falling off all over the place. So, once I got that under control, it wasn't so bad. Um, so, so let, let's start talking about, now that I've, I've gotten past that part, let's go ahead and focus on some of the really good parts about this. Is one, I really do like the articulation. The like I said, the 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 arm and the legs are single molded inner frames with built in joints, and this whole you know the 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 mechanisms that do the piece separation when you bend the leg back, which you do get a good nice you know 180 degree bend. 
and you know you can oh that's gonna come off but you know you can you, you can go up to about 90 degrees although it may knock this off because this can't really fold into oh, there we go yep there's the arm and the shoulder piece as you can see nothing was holding the shoulder piece on there I was hoping that having the uh, top coat on the peg might hold the arm on better. But I think what it is, is that on the shoulder, this piece right here prevents the peg from going all the way into the arm joint here. So it uh, doesn't clasp on as good as it should, like right here. It can't get that far in. So, but anyway, but the, the leg does and it's got these nice separation points now when you bend it back you probably want to make sure that the hip goes in you know the upper leg goes in first and then the, the second otherwise it could get caught so just be careful the arm has similar not as much separation but it does have some like th this piece here is kind of a floating piece so it comes down a little bit and reveals that once again you know you're going to have it you know, you know, and it, it turns fully at the top here. The shoulder can turn all the way, pretty much all the way around if you wanted it to. Just be careful because, oh, yeah, there's probably another piece that I need to glue on. But, um, so, <laughs> now the, um, there are two sets of, uh, Bean Saber handles. Both are designed to hold the same saber effect, the beam effect. But one is to just kind of have not in use here, or they can be stored on these little pegs here, both of them right next to each other. Oops on the shield. I haven't actually tried to put these on since I did the top coat, so it might be a little bit thicker. I just need to, once I put it on once, it'll be fine. There we go. So both of them will go on there. The shield has the, you know, the typical grip. This here is a side slot. Now, when I first put the arm together, I couldn't understand why there was such a gap here, but that's where the shield clicks into here. Now, it just kind of sits there. It doesn't really click in. Um... So, you know, you would use the grasping hands, and I'll get to the grasping hands in a moment. It does have the closed fist. It has two, two, two closed fists, one for each side. And then it also has the mass, uh, the uh, real grade, which is common for the real grade. It has an articulated hand where there's little ball joints that, that clip on the, the thumb, the index finger, and then the other three, which is very common. And, uh, and in that, you know, we got this right here. And with this, for the sword to be in use, then it just clips into that little slot there. And then you can, you know, have the, have the two swords. Now, one thing that is a bit of a pain is that as you manipulate this, these things are going to pop off all the time. Oops, sorry, I wasn't at the camera. The fingers are going to pop out all the time. I try, I even tried gluing these in a single position, but I guess the type of plastic these are made out of doesn't like the glue that I have, so I'll have to find something else. I figured it would be better to have them glued because there is a joint right here at the at the first knuckle essentially going up the fingers 
and you know, and this three one has it as well. So if I could glue the ball joint in a single place, and then I could still manipulate the joint to hang on to things, that's what I was trying to do. Um, but these things are, it's very tough to, to have them grip anything and stay on for very long. Um, so as you can see, certain things are falling apart. It does have two guns. It's got your normal beam rifle here. That's typical of the, uh, granddaddy Gundam where you have the, 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 the camera scope thing. Okay, I guess I'm gonna have to glue. <laughs> and and this moves as well. I don't understand why that moves, but it that's common. So I'm gonna have to glue that on and keep it stationary. Okay. Um, and then it also has the bazooka, which is common as well for the uh, Granddaddy Gundam. And it just has this little thing, and then each of them in the handle has these little pegs that come out to either secure it in the hand or somewhere on the armor. You know, and this guy has this as well. The little... Oh my gosh, these things are... Huh. I don't know why that broke. Well, hmm. I guess the plastic's a little bit um, fragile because I I hadn't moved it since the top coat was put on. So I bet you that's what happened. Huh. Okay. Anyway, and then another nice thing that it does come with, it has a little Amuro statue. It doesn't have a seated pilot or anything like that, but it does have this, and it does have the guide so you can paint it and stuff like that. I just didn't have the chance to paint it before doing this video. I'm trying to keep to my every other week schedule, and I already had to delay this one a week because it was just, I was just getting too frustrated with the build. But, so... I mean, overall, I really like the way it looks. And the fact that I'm more of the type of person that's going to build it and put it on a shelf somewhere, I'm not going to play with it, that's going to be fine. Now, if you intend to play with it or anything like that, this is not the one that you want to play with. I, you know, get the, if you want, if you want this scale, get the um, HG Revive version because that's so much better put together and it'll stay together and you can pose that and all that kind of stuff it won't have as much detail but it's going to stay together so um that's what i would recommend this this is just going to go on a shelf so once i get it all together and glue what i need to glue and all that kind of stuff everything's going to be fine but because of the fact that everything falls apart i had to glue so much and I am giving Bandai slack for the fact that this is the first of the grade, so they were trying a whole bunch of new things. And I, I have to I have to praise them for trying these new things. And eventually they did get them to work based on, you know, what they worked with beforehand. But and, and the aesthetic is really nice. I really like the way it looks. I love the extra details and the extra panel lining. And stuff like that, which really make it pop. I am going to have to give this kit overall a C. Because it just, it doesn't stay together at all. And, you know, like I said, I had to glue so much on there. And, and you shouldn't have to glue a snap together kit. So, I hope this was helpful. I, I'm not even going to try to pose it as I normally do. Um, I will have the figure presentation video like normal. But I have a feeling if I try to do too too much here, then it it things may not work out with the uh, <laughs> doing it any further. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you for the next one. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That really does help out the channel. And if you would like to see more like this, please go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell. 
If you do have some time, I would really appreciate it if you could watch one of the videos that are popping up around my head.